Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of UCraft. Uh, today, we're slowly getting our ME system finalized. Let's throw that in there. We do need some more panels. Looks like we need some more quartz glass, but I want to build... Oops, that's not how you spell panel. I need more logic processors. Great time to show off my sort of automation of inscribers. I have upgraded these to the advanced inscribers, which use the applied energistics inscribers inside of them, but you can lock the... Uh, inputs and they can hold uh, they can hold multiple of each up to a stack in each slot so they just work a little better and also they do connect to ender io uh, item conduits don't connect to the other inscribers but interesting thing is power conduits will connect to the applied energistics, but not to these AE2 conduits. So, we've uh, had to use the Ender.io dense ME conduit, because more than 8, which we have 8 here, plus, plus a guy back here for an ME interface, so that we can put some patterns in here and automate this process. Uh, because that's more than eight, we've had to run a dense ME conduit over there, and it's really not much more, uh, not much more resources than a regular ME conduit. So, with the mod Extra Cells 2, we can store fluid and gases with our ME system, just with drives. Look up some gas drives. Yeah, there's some gas storage cells there. Which is super cool. So we have these two terminals on here. And now, to save ourselves a little resources, we have these Futura blocks, which is just cobblestone and redstone. But it has an ME controller. So we can chisel that and put some of these. Oops. Let's see what this gives us. Oh, that's interesting. It's almost like a glass. Hmm. Wasn't quite what I was hoping for. Alright, so we've just gone with some plain dark oak blank facades here. I also have uh, some limestone ones. Which... Looks like it's the original limestone texture. Oops, there we go. So, you guys might have to let me know which one looks better. It's not quite the trodden bricks, and you can sort of see it here, how it's a little different, but I think it'll be close enough that it won't cause too many issues, hopefully. But, yeah, so we have a crafting terminal, a pattern terminal, so this is where we make patterns to automate, and an interface terminal, which, I mean, this terminal isn't named anything, I guess. Can we name it? Eh, I don't know. Maybe it'll just stay as nothing. Oops. Maybe it'll just stay as nothing and be plank like that. We also have the fluid and the gas terminal, as we said. And then this is a pattern encoder, which the cool thing about this is I can take the recipe for Oakwood Stairs 
and just hit this move items button and it moves it in here and if we had patterns in here we could create a pattern so this works great for all the crafting things because then I don't have to have oak wood planks in order to create the crafting pattern but it doesn't work for processing patterns so we we'll still need this pattern terminal in order to create these processing patterns but this works wonderfully for the crafting patterns all right so here we have oh there's a little bit there here we have a setup for the automation of these grains of infinity we have some here but uh this will just be an automatic setup that will handle it and let's just get rid of that zombie uh this will handle the i don't know generation of these this vacuum hopper will pick it up uh it's from open blocks we have oops we have a couple different uh vacuum absorption hoppers uh but this one from open blocks is by far the cheapest so we're using that and so far it seems to be doing well we have a dispenser and then a timer an rf tools timer and this is just set on five seconds which seems to be sufficient we just need some the flowing of the blazing pyrothium which uh we made in our magma crucible uh with just some pyrothium dust uh there easy stuff i mean we're already producing sulfur and the rest of this stuff is pretty easy to get um this stuff as you can see we're sort of fighting it out over who gets the grains of infinity because i have my magnet on still but yeah the flowing blazing pyrothium sets the bedrock on fire and then when it stops burning it turns into these grains of infinity and that'll collect it so get out from these blocks we can head back up holy mobs uh, where's the hole? Go towards the light. The light. Uh, I was exploring, flying around a lot, looking for a sunflower so that it could automate yellow dye. But that did not happen. We need. Let's see, so that in there, lead, silver, copper, all that in there. Yeah. All right, that's going. We wanted yellow dye for our gas storage cells. They have uh, dandelion yellow or yellow pigment, which is just yellow but harder to get. The lapis for the blue dye is a little easier. There it is for the fluid ones. But. We'll sleep and then go check out some stuff. All right, down here we have these ME drive fixtures, which are, if we can access it, are just ME drive, but like flush with the block. So instead of having a whole block for the ME drive, it's something like the terminal. And we're just using the yellow cables because we have a lot of those. But we can cover it up like that. I'm still not 100% certain where I want these to go. But let's grab and put, put all the 16s in there. All the 1s in there. I mean, that guy's rendering a little weird. All right, well... I don't like those glitchy textures. And we can make this go straight up and down. So I'm going to make a couple more of these ME drives. Actually, we can put this one over here and get access to it. There we go. So we have four drives. Two at the top for regular storage and two at the bottom for gas and fluid storage. 
And these ones take a lot of quartz glass for these tanks here. Each one is eight and then quartz glass and you need three of these tanks across the bottom. So that's why there's only three drives in there instead of six. I made six of each of these to match up with our uh, drive, drive fixtures here. But uh, so I guess we can put some more in there. But what's nice is now we can take all these random buckets and just put all of this in here. Also, will that go in? I guess that might not go in. Oh, that'll go in. There it goes. We can empty out all of these fluid tanks and buckets into our storage system. So that's super nice. And then, of course, if we have any gases or anything, we can store those as well. And the nice thing is, as long as we have buckets in our ME system, hmm, I thought we could just click on it. And that's interesting that it's silver. Let's get a bucket. And a tank. Oh, there we go. So we just put it, put it into here. Select the gelid cryothium, and it'll fill almost instantly. Nice. You get, yeah, there's a jelly cryothium bucket. Interesting. I thought you could just click on the fluid. Nope, doesn't look like it. I guess you have to have a bucket or some sort of tank to put it in. Which, I mean, always makes sense. But, I am sure we are close to the end of our time here together. And I want to thank all of you guys for watching this episode, checking it out as we work our way through some applied energetics, automation, and other stuff. I did start growing some Fluix. Yeah. Always need more Fluix. And, uh... That's a pain to keep keep charging and keep crafting, so we'll just uh, make it, grow it, and then we can just make it pretty easy. But thanks, you guys, for checking out this episode. I will see you guys next week in the next episode. If you appreciated this one, then go ahead, like, comment, subscribe, and yeah. We'll see you guys next week.